Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to my studio and my channel. Last week uh, I published this video about uh, this YouTube subscriber counter button. A lot of you asked me questions about this other counter I made to go along with it that tracks my Twitter and Instagram and Instructables followers. So today I'm posting a follow-up video about how to make that tracker. Just like last time, I'm using a five by seven inch shadow box to build the circuit inside. And then I'm using a graphic printout that I made using the logos for the various sites I wanna track face down inside. And I'll press the seven segment displays up against the back of the paper so they shine through without being blurry. Unlike my YouTube subscriber counter, this circuit is a little more modular with header wires coming off of the back of the seven segment displays as they plug into wires next to the microcontroller board, which is on its own small permaproto. And that's a Node MCU, in case you're curious. All the seven segment displays plug in to the I squared C bus, so they're all actually in parallel with each other, uh, the data and clock lines are, that is. And the way that the microcontroller addresses each one is uh, by telling it apart based on how the address tabs are soldered at the back, and we'll go through that more in the code. So here's the Arduino sketch for the multi-social tracker. It's basically a bunch of Brian Locke's different API library sample codes mashed up together into one sketch that can drive a bunch of seven segment displays. So definitely check out his various libraries on his GitHub and his YouTube channel and his Instructables. Really, really awesome and helpful and makes uh, projects like this easy for someone like me who doesn't have all of that web coding experience. So first we'll include all of those libraries and their dependencies, the Arduino JSON library and the JSON streaming parser, as well as the LED backpack and GFX libraries needed for the seven segment displays. Then including the stuff for the, the Wi-Fi. And then um, here's a custom section you would change to be your network name and password, sign on to your Wi-Fi network. And then this is the Twitter authentication bearer token. Um, I generated this uh, as per Brian's instructions using my API key and my API key secret and the command line. And then, uh, the, but the other two, the Instructables and the Instagram don't require you to sign in to get any of the information. Uh, then we create, one of them needs a secure, two of them need a secure client and the other one can be insecure. So we'll just set up the Wi-Fi clients there. And then this is the, gonna be the number of minutes in between checks. Then here's the configurable section for the username. So your Twitter username, search was username, and Instagram username. And then uh, just like in my YouTube uh, subscriber counter sketch, I wanted to set up multiple seven segment displays at once, but in this case, there's six of them instead of just two. And I actually, I don't have six in my circuit. I actually only have four inside my circuit. So I'm only popular enough on Twitter to need two. And then the other two, um, although I only am using a display for the low digits of each and have those displays soldered to reflect these different addresses here, I actually omitted the high digit displays from the Instructables and the Instagram rows, which lowers the cost of the project. Um, so I don't have enough followers to need that second display, but the code supports it. So should there be a day, I can just paste another display inside there. And then for those of you who are fortunate enough to be more popular on these different networks, this code will, will already work. Anyway, okay, so in the setup, I'm just using, yeah, just uh, initializing the displays all at once using a for loop setting up the Wi-Fi stuff, like getting the, logging into the Twitter situation. And then in the loop, it just calls each one of these get stats functions with a delay in between, which I found was pretty critical to making them all play nice with each other. And each of these functions is just borrowed from the example code in Brian's libraries to get the different stats. And I've added in that same little section of code I explained in the last video for splitting up the numbers um, if it's over 10,000 and writing the lower digits to the right-hand display and the higher digits to the left-hand display and then padding it with zeros, which is based on that, um, that death clock project that Phil B wrote on the Adafruit learning system, um, wrote that code. So um, that's really helpful there. And it's, it, I just added it to each one of these functions that gets the stats. And then in the loop, uh, each one of those functions just is called and then writes to the display every minute. 
When I made this counter, it's just one piece of printer paper and the display is taped to the back, but it's kind of wedged in the side, so support it. Here I was taping the displays directly to the paper and they were making it sag a little bit. So I used a thicker paper, two sheets of it actually, and you can see the difference in light emission. So I'm gonna try to reconfigure this with thin paper in the front, thicker paper in the back, see if I can get it to be a little bit more even. That's it for this project, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and for subscribing to my channel and to my other social accounts so you can see what I'm up to. I put out new videos here every single week about crafts, technology, and my life here in New York City. See you next time.